Welcome back to Learning Solidity. Now in our previous tutorial we covered the ERC20 standard of token development. In this one we will be covering the ERC223 standard. Now the difference between the two standards is the ERC20 standard is more specifically looking at token delegation or token distribution delegation and the ERC223 standard is more about um, protecting your tokens from getting lost in the nether and more specifically being distributed to contracts. So jumping straight into the ERC ERC223 token standard, um, I'm leaving a link below to the page I'm currently on for Dexaran, who is the guy who basically designed the ERC223 standard. Now this is, like I state, is more just specifically around ensuring that your tokens don't get distributed to a contract and therefore can then no longer be interacted with and essentially just completely lost. So if I jump now directly back into my code, what I've done is taken the example I had from my previous tutorial. Now I've cleaned this up a bit. I am going to address a few things, but I'm just going to cover first what I've cleaned up. Now I first split the functionality of token, which is basically your minimum viable tokens uh, uh, code that's required. So your balance of your transfer and your basic uh, constraints of symbol, name, decimals, total supply, so forth. And the other thing that I have cleaned up as well is the ERC20 standard. Now I've created just the functions that are required for the ERC20 standard in the uh, file erc20.sol. And I've done that because a lot of the functions, or well, sort of a lot of the standards I've seen knocking around forums and so forth of the ERC20 and ERC223 actually have overlapping uh, sort of standards or basic um, layouts. So what I've also done is created an ERC20 interface that just simply implements the, in essence, if you're going to go down the basic, very basic route of applying the ERC223 standard, um, you only require one function and one event. Or you don't essentially require the event, it's just, um, it's good practice to have that. Now there is usually a second function to this which is a it basically another transfer event but in at the end of it has an additional callback um, sort of string and um, I'll loosely cover that but let's just go straight back into my first token now what I've done because the um, remix compiler has updated recently as you can probably see here I have also made sure that all of my functions have an access modifier so that's why they all return public and so forth I've cleaned up a lot of the variable naming so a lot of the before I used a lot of underscore um, a double underscore and so forth and this time I'm kind of sticking to a single underscore and I have also made sure that all the return statements return um, just this specific value rather than like previously where I had returns boolean and then um, the return variable so I've got rid of all that because I think that created a little bit of confusion I'm going to address a couple of elephants in the room now the first being that um, on my transfer from I missed two very key things and this is the reason why you should never never just assume that the code I'm writing is perfectly correct and use it the first one I actually have is making sure that the value that you're sending from is actually correct which is what this is here I, I did actually tack that on and um, just to ensure that I don't didn't forget it again so we're basically saying is the balance from this account more than or equal to the value that we're sending because if not we're going to try and send someone more than we should and that's that's very important and the next thing that we forgot to do is also reduce from the allowances now because we are removing a value from a pre-existing amount anyway as in the balance of we also need to make sure that we're removing the value from the allowance as well which we didn't do previously so why is that complaining duh, 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 duh. Oh, it's because underscore value and the final thing that we need to address as well is that we didn't use actually any events so simply to use the events transfer and then it's from to value and to make sure that that's the same for this here the only difference is the from is the sender so message sender, there we are. message sender on to and also the approval so approve and then the i think it's message sender i think it's from spender so sender and then value again okay what was wrong with that what did i miss out from the erc20 approval I should have that one right 
prove it. And there we go. And that is basically just cleaned up um, the couple of mistakes that I've noticed. There's possibly more in this, so you know I'll, I'll update it if I find any more. Now, like I said, I did cut out a lot of the code between ERC20, ERC223, and also token. Now, what I've done is I've created a constructor in token to do the allocation of the symbol, name, uh, decimals, and also the amount of Ethereum in circulation, or the amount of tokens, should I say, in circulation. And that is basically the minimum uh, sort of like requirement of your constructor for the token. So that just assigns these default values. I've created functions for these as well because I've seen that's becoming more and more common practice. So I've kind of changed that. I've also left the very basic um, abstract functionality down here as well. Now, just a side note, I'm having problems um, at the moment with this Remix compiler creating uh, anything because the contract does not meet all functions and, and does not implement all functions and thus cannot be created. I, I think that's a bug at the moment with this new compiler. I haven't figured out exactly why. I tried to basically figure out why before and I couldn't get my head around what was going on with it. So part of this tutorial, I won't be compiling anything. Um, you just have to kind of just take my word and assume it's right. I'll compile it later and then make sure the code's right and update appropriately. So let's just jump straight into the ERC-223 standards. Now, we previously had a transfer and a transfer from function. I'm going to discard the transfer from function because I'm not going to wrap, I'm not going to basically add a dependency of the ECR-223 into the ERC-223. 20 standard i want them to basically be loosely coupled so we can have both in the same place so what i'm going to do is start by implementing the erc 223 standard now the only difference between the erc the standard basic token transfer and the erc 223 is that we're checking to see if a contract exists from the token that we're sending it to so the first thing that i'm actually going to do in all this is create a function to see if what who we're sending to is a contract so let's just start by creating a function that call it is contract let's specify an address underscore address i'll just call it addr returns and we're returning a boolean okay so what we're going to do is we're going to have to do some inline assembly now the reason we have to do some inline assembly is because i'm not aware of any other way in primitive solidity to actually make a call to an address to see if it is a contract that might come later on or i might not be aware of one at the moment but what we're going to do is call some um inline assembly to basically state um is there any code at that address if so uh, what's the length of it because that's the easiest way to test if there's code there because if there's code there it'll have a length greater than zero so what we're going to do is create a uint call that code size okay that's actually we'll leave that unassigned and then we're simply going to create our inline assembly now i'm going to do functional inline assembly and i will cover inline assembly as a later tutorial but for now i'm just going to cover this one method which is ext code size which i'll leave a link to in the description box down below again um, where are we with the XT code size? So here we are. So basically, the code, uh, the size of the code at address A. So simply with this EXT code size, all we have to do is basically say um, code size. We're allocating. It's a different operator for allocation in assembly. Um, EXT code size, and then we're going to pass in the address ADDR. We don't have to semicolon to terminate the line because that's just how assembly works. And then we're just returning is code size greater than zero. And because if it's greater than zero, we know it's a contract. So because I don't want to jump too much into the existing transfer function anyway, I want to add um, a basic stop at that point. So we're going to make sure that this transfer function can only be transferred to non-contracts. So to do that, we're going to also say not is contract so now if that is a contract that the address we're sending to is a contract we will be stopped there basically because in essence the erc uh, well solidity as a whole any function it works in like um, a transactional state i don't know if you know something similar to my sequel where you start a transaction and if at any point that transaction fails the whole state is rolled back essentially to the state before the transaction was called in in essence is kind of executes in an atomic way so everything has to pass or everything has to fail so it doesn't matter what's executed um before the end of it if anything that's executed fails even at the very last call all of it is rolled back and that's essentially how solidity works it's actually it's it's how a, a bank ledger should work 
so it doesn't matter if anything down the line passes and we've done something that shouldn't allow it to pass we will be protected so just kind of go straight now back into our function because so we had um, in ERC20 we had uh, well sorry in standard token we had transfer in ERC223 we have transfer there oh, spell it right transfer uh, we had an address very similar to the basic standard we had a uint again same as the basic standard the only extra we have is bytes and that is the data that's going to be passed to our our contract that we're actually going to allow to have data passed to and i have missed oh see public returns and i was going to say it's a boolean okay same sort of logic again now the only difference i'm actually going to do here is i'm going to copy this whole thing paste it and then simply switch the is not contract to is contract and i'm also going to update the event because in erc 223 we use an extra we've got an event with an extra value on which is the data and let's just jump back into that sorry so that is going to be our data and before that what we're going to do is we're going to invoke the contract we're sending data to now the contract we're sending data to has to also follow a standard now the remix compiler will error at this point um i've already tried this i know it's going to error uh, but we'll, like I said, I'm, I, I can't compile at the moment anyway. This is not letting me. So for now, what we're going to do is um, we're going to add the receiving contract code. Now, on Dexron's example, he has an example for a receiving contract, which is essentially this one here, which is the ERC-223 receiving contract. And all it is is a fallback method. So we're basically saying um, you have received this amount of um, Ethereum, or oh, this, this token, from this address, this value, and here's some extra data that you may require. So in this case, all we're simply gonna state now, because we know it's a contract, we know it's certainly it's a contract, we're now just gonna try and execute it. So in our imports at the top as well, I forgot to import this, ERC223, receive, uh, receive uh, contract. Okay, so let's just copy and paste that just to make our life a little bit easier. Um, where were we? We were here. So ERC20 contract, uh, which is going to call us contract equal, I'm not sure we're not because it's going to have a conflicting name. It's got contract. Is equal to a new ERC20 contract at um, the two address. Does that need to. Oh, no, that's correct. That's correct. Because it's not a new instance, we're just calling that existing potential contract. And then simply state in that contract dot uh, what's the function that we've got we have the token fallback which takes a from address a value and a data so if i jump back to that uh, i can't remember what it was uh, bloody hell mind has gone token fallback token fallback which took the from address so it says we're sending from someone so this uh, case would be message dot sender we're sending the value that we've sent and we're also passing them the data that we've sent them so there we have it now we're it's basically instantiating a contract we're passing them some that we're basically like I say we're instantiating the uh, contract that should be receiving it we are sending them our our token and then we're sending them who sent it how much of it and any additional data that we potentially want to pass to that as well and that is in a nutshell how the erc 223 standard applies to tokens um i'm gonna cut it short there because i don't feel like there's any more i can really contribute towards the erc 223 standard um there's a great little bit on the um the, the sort of the dex and github page i definitely def uh, dex around sorry uh, github page i definitely advise you read that um, there's plenty of documentation on the web if you just search for ERC-223 you'll find loads of information about it but that in a nutshell is how you can protect your token transfer to not end up uh, being sent to a contract where it shouldn't have been and this is the end of the tutorial now in the next tutorial I plan to cover deploying our contract on the uh, Ethereum network or the Romston Ethereum network which is the which is one of the test networks I will be switching to a linux environment to do that because my test environment is um 
in my basically on this machine because the ethereum blockchain is so big and i don't have a massive ssd it's um, pretty much being consumed by that so the romston one is on a computer next to me and i will be using that one to demo the deployment of this contract or the deployment of this contract slash token so we can look at it in sort of a, sort of a, a real world example uh, I'm going to call it there for now. Um, if you found this tutorial useful, give it a thumbs up. If you would like to keep maybe kept up to date with my videos, uh, obviously hit the subscribe. Uh, either way, I hope you have a great day, and uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.